Hi, I'm going to talk to you about rhythmic letting go, the ability to experience rhythm in a released way from the body, from the body and soul. Because rhythm is an expressive thing, so it's not just the body, it's also the soul. Now, letting go is quite a general thing. And I don't mean, by letting go, I don't mean that kind of colloquial sense that we, we often use it these days of like, just let it go. I don't mean that. That's not what I mean. I mean letting go of, of tension, letting go of unwanted tension. So I'm, I'm really mean kind of relax, but it's not like go floppy. You can't play music in a sort of relaxed floppy state. We just need to be in a state that is flowing and doesn't have this, this tension. So we have to let go of that in order to play music or sing music rhythmically. So as I say, there's a general side of, of letting go in this way. So, so I'll give you an example. I, I learned to swim rather, rather late. Um, and as an adult, I learned to swim and I was taught to realize that I was afraid of the water. I didn't actually realize I was afraid. I didn't realize I had tension, but uh, my instructor told me he could see that I had tension and I was afraid of getting my face wet and getting water in my ears and my nose and so on. And where I started to notice it, funnily enough, was in the rhythm. I noticed that in the exercise he was giving me, which was simply to put my head in the water and breathe out, take my head out of the water and breathe in. And just repeating that. And I noticed there was an unrhythmic quality to my movement. It didn't feel musical. So I had that experience with music where I did let go to draw on. And of course, as soon as I realized that, and I really mean as soon as, like it was an instant choice, I let go of that tension and I used rhythm to actually help me let go, to help me put my head in the water and breathe out and take my head out of the water and breathe in. And it became a habit very quickly, it felt very natural, very rhythmic, very flowing, and within no time I was swimming. Just from letting go of that tension and allowing the rhythm to come in. Another example I want to give you more sort of general letting go would be another story. When I was, I think, about 14, I went with a, a group of people, a group of kids to, um, you know, like a theme park, and there was a big roller coaster. And I went on it once, but I didn't enjoy it at all because, you know, I was tense and I was resisting resisting the whole experience. And I noticed that the, the kids that enjoyed it and wanted to go on again um, threw their hands in the air. They didn't hold on to the, the sides desperately like I did. They opened their eyes. They screamed. They actually felt the fear and sort of almost enjoyed feeling terrified and so on. So I thought, well, I'm going to give this a go. I'm going to see if I can do this. And I went on again. And the same thing as the swimming, as soon as I let go of that whatever it was that was stopping me, just go with the ride, go with the experience. Maybe maybe I had to embrace the belief that I was pretty safe, I wasn't going to fall out. I don't know, but something, something allowed me to say, right, I'm going to do this. I'm going to throw my hands in the air. I'm going to scream. I'm going to enjoy this ride. Enjoy, the, if you like, the horror, the terror of this ride. And I wanted to go on it again and again after that. So it was a fairly instant thing. And that's the point. Now, music is an expressive thing, obviously. So there's a bit more to it. It's more like, you know, if you're a shy person and you're afraid of speaking, it's more kind of that realm with music as well. Maybe in some ways, the fear of throwing your hands in the air and screaming is <laughs> on the roller coaster. It's an expressive thing. So we have to lose to be free in the body, you know, rhythmically when we do music, we have to lose our self consciousness. So that feeling of being self-conscious, even just clapping along to, you know, the groove of a song, we can kind of be self-conscious about it. That won't create the best rhythm. We've got to let go, feel it. And this is more of a choice than a learning. Yeah, you have to practice maybe, but it's not something that, that we can't do, that we have to learn to do letting go and feeling rhythm flowingly. A lot of people even like to make out they have a poor sense of rhythm because they're actually just afraid of letting go and feeling it. So this is what I mean by musical letting go. It's a combination really of a sort of physical freedom and an expressive unselfconsciousness. Another way of, of, of 
perhaps drawing an analogy is to, to use a, a different realm but a very related realm of say dancing most people you know might have had an experience where they feel self-conscious about dancing um maybe not many people were on the dance floor but you kind of wanted to but you didn't quite dare imagine if you just thought i just don't care what people think of my dancing i don't care what people think of me that unselfconsciousness and then you let the rhythm flow through your body and you just have fun that's what I mean by rhythmic letting go. All right, so what does that mean in terms of the piano? Well, a piano is a rhythmic instrument. It's kind of got this percussive aspect to it. When, when the key, when every key hits the key bed, when the, if that's the distance from the, the key being up to the key being down, the, that distance down goes, uh, bah. so it's like a clap. So you kind of can, just like you can sort of bounce with your hand, and you feel that sort of freedom of bouncing. You can bounce a key. Now, if I was going to sort of like swing something round and round or wave my hand, swinging something round and round, um, like doing, doing a hula hooping, that's a very rhythmic thing. Uh, what else? There's so many things. I could, I could probably just go on thinking of examples and I'm sure you get the point. There's a sort of freedom to do, even bouncing your leg like that, when, you, when you're a bit sort of nervous and you bounce your leg, most people do that. There's a freedom in a, in a rhythmic movement where a kind of resonance where we don't control it. So if I started waving like this, you'd think that was a bit weird. So if I play a key in that way, kind of pressing the key, trying to control the outcome, it's going to be a problem. There's not going to be rhythm, free rhythm anyway, in my movement. Whereas if I just practice, and you can do this, if you just take a key, any key you like, or even a chord, a group of keys. I'll do one key. And you you get your finger in touch with the surface of the key, just gently resting. You need some support from the arms because you're not letting the key go down. You're keeping the key up, just resting on the surface. And then you feel the weight of the key. Don't push it all the way down, but just sort of bounce the key without it going all the way down. And then let it go all the way down and bounce it. That's a kind of free rhythmic movement. This is what we're looking for. So even if I'm just playing like single notes all over the keyboard, every single time I play a, 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 a note, I play a key, I want it to feel like it sort of claps down, bounces down to the key bed. And then there's an element of sort of feeling that landing softly and you bounce. So. That feels rhythmic. You can sort of see it in the way that I'm using my body that I've let go. I'm not tense, I'm not resisting it. And this is what we have to do when we, when we play the piano. So if I'm, you know, even really simple improvising, like something like just a repeating chord pattern, which is, you know, a very useful thing to be able to do well. got to have, I've got to have that freedom in the movement, that freedom from the body so that it has that flow, it has that quality of sounding rhythmic. <laughs> it kind of won't sound rhythmic if you don't feel the rhythm in your body. I think this is very, very important. You see, the point is it's not technique. It's not something that I can say, oh, if you bend your finger to a certain angle or you do certain physical, technical, like engineering things with your body, it will happen. It's something that we have to recognize and simply choose to experience. It's a natural thing in us all to be rhythmic. And we have to tune into that, um, tune into it and let it out unselfconsciously. And it doesn't matter what you're playing. It doesn't matter if you're playing something extremely delicate.
every single key that I played then had that rhythmic feeling of, of landing on the keypad, like a, like a clap. Now, obviously, it's a small movement on the piano. It's only, you know, less than an inch, the drop from the key being up to, to hitting the key bed. Um, so clapping is probably a good way to get that rhythmic feeling going or hitting things, hitting drums, tapping. All this stuff is good to, to get that rhythmic freedom. But the thing is, it must never feel stiff or controlled. And it's that losing control that can make people scared. That that's when being fluent is really useful. Understanding the structure of what you're playing mentally, having a real clear picture of, of the structure of what you're playing in your mind, really helps you to let go and feel the rhythm flowing through you. But it doesn't matter how hard we try to make our playing better, if we don't let go and don't feel, let go of all that tension and self-consciousness, and we don't really feel the rhythm flowing through our bodies, no matter how hard we work at it, we'll probably never sound as good as we could, nowhere near as good as we could, if we could find that same kind of freedom that I found when I decided to throw my hands in the air and scream when I went on that roller coaster.